Hi, welcome to Current Beauty Favorites. You could call it March Favorites, but we are at this point well into April, so we're just calling it favorites. Part two of this video is also going to be up next and that's going to be my recent beauty fails. I had enough to put it into a full video so stay tuned for that. Also trying something a little bit different with my background. I don't know what I'm doing so if you like it let me know. If you don't let me know but be nice. Okay let's get into the favorites. Oh one more thing if you want to know how I got this nice little eye makeup I'm doing a festival makeup lookbook for this year so be on the lookout for that one and now let's get started with skincare. I finally tried my first product from Renee Rouleau. This is their Better Than Balm Cleansing Balm. I love testing cleansing balms and cleansing oils. It's my favorite skincare product to test. And this is the most unique cleansing product I have ever tried. So they describe this as a dual phase cleanser. It's an oil to gel formula. And what's really interesting about it is it truly is like a thick gel. I'm gonna see if I can squeeze some out for you. Yeah, there you go. It is like a super thick gel, very viscous and almost like, I don't know how to describe it other than grippy or thick or like tacky. It's very interesting. It also smells like a spa. It has that kind of like lavender citrus herbal scent and it's quite strong. So if you don't like your cleansing balms to be scented, I would probably skip this, but I haven't noticed any irritation with this. This is really, really, really effective. Like it removes everything. You're left with like the softest, smoothest skin. It's so interesting. And it really does transform from this like thick gel just into this milky oil. It's such a unique experience. I really like that it comes in a squeezy tube. You get five ounces of product, which is really great. This is my first introduction to Renee Rouleau. So if you like anything else, definitely let me know what else to try in the comments. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm not a foundation girly, but I'm becoming a foundation girly because I'm finally just trying foundations that really work well for me and my specific preferences. I'm so glad I finally got to try the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I had tried it years ago, but I remember it being so heavily fragranced that I just didn't want to irritate my skin. I have been wearing this every day and it has not caused any irritation for me. I really hope I can figure out what kind of fragrance causes irritation because the fragrance that Makeup Forever and Dior puts in their foundation literally give me a chemical burn, but this one does not. I'll be brief because I know everyone's tried this already, but it is just thin and liquidy and so incredibly blendable. This shade 4.75 is a great match for me and it sets to a natural skin-like finish, which is everything I've always wanted in a foundation. I'm not sure why it's called luminous silk and it says perfect glow flawless foundation. To me, oftentimes this actually looks more matte on my skin. Maybe it's because I wear a matte sunscreen, but I love it. I don't find it to be glowy. I don't find it to leave my skin dewy. I just look like my skin is skin and not makeup. And that's exactly what I look for. So this is now my number one foundation pick with the L'Oreal True Match being second place. The next product was recommended to me by, who do you think? Dev. Devin Jessmer on YouTube. Definitely check her out if you haven't. She is where I get all my skincare recommendations from. She's an esthetician. She's amazing. She has incredible skin. She is obsessed with the Make Emulsion Moisturizer. What's it called? This is the Make Hydroscape Moisturizing Reverse Emulsion. This is her favorite moisturizer, so I had to try it. Now I've had a little bit of a rocky road with Make as a brand in general. Some of their products are total wins for me. Others are like huge fails. So it's kind of a love it or hate it situation. She she warned me that the texture of this is kind of weird and I'm gonna show you. It has the texture of a runny zinc sunscreen. And at first you think about it and you're like, ooh, I don't want that on my face. Nobody likes the feeling of a mineral sunscreen. And so it's a moisturizer, but it's kind of like a hydrating serum mixed with a very occlusive moisturizer. It is so interesting, but look how dewy that left my skin. It truly is like a hydrating serum and a very thin runny occlusive moisturizer. I'm wearing it today under makeup and it is just incredible. It leaves your skin hydrated and plump and moisturized and dewy for hours and hours and hours and hours. I've never tried anything like it before, but I'm just blown away. Now that I've really understood what this does, I love it and I can't stop using it. If I had to pick one product from this video that I think everybody would love, that I think is so worth purchasing that I would like put money on people will like is the new Kulfi Zari Eyes Cream Eyeshadows. I, 
like I, my brain like bleh, 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 glitches when I try to think about these and talk about them because they're so good I don't even know where to start. I'll start by saying this is the best cream eyeshadow formula that I've ever tried. No competition, no exaggeration. The first time I tried it, I was like, yep, this is the product I've been waiting for. This is everything I've ever wanted in a cream shadow. We're gonna start with my favorite, which is Bronze Brocade. They describe this as a deep champagne with silver shimmer. Interestingly, the same way that Hourglass describes their glitter topper in Ray, which is my other favorite eyeshadow. I don't know if it's a deep champagne, maybe. To me, it just seems like a mix of a beautiful chocolatey brown with lots of gold metallic shimmer running throughout it. That's maybe what makes it seem like a deep champagne, but to me, it's more of like a brown, gold, bronze metallic. I've never met an eyeshadow that popped my eye color more. It's just perfect if I wanna be glam, perfect if I wanna be more natural. This formula is unlike anything I've ever tried. It is a whipped kind of cream formula, similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, but with this jelly quality to it. And I never tried the ColourPop Jelly Mulch eyeshadows, so I can't compare, but I would imagine it's like if the Charlotte Tilbury and the ColourPop had a baby. It's super, super bouncy. So when you apply it with a brush, you really barely get any color. And that's great on days when I wanna be really natural, maybe if I have a lot of Zoom meetings at work. But then if you use your finger, you get full impact color. And these have such a creamy, like airy whipped formula. They are just the most blendable formula I have ever tried. If you are a beginner, you cannot mess these up because you get so much time to work with these before they set down. And then once they set, they are completely budge proof. I have worn these for 12 hours and noticed zero creasing and almost no fading. It's truly, truly a remarkable product. Like I could not be more passionate about this. And Satara Sparkles is a gorgeous light pink shade with all this wonderful kind of silver and pink reflex throughout it. I truly can't get enough of these. I just really hope that they launch more shades. They have like a bright blue, a chartreuse green. They have a light pink and a cranberry pink, and then they have the bronze shade. I really hope they come out with a line of kind of like nudes from fair to deep skin. And I think that would just be such a bestseller once people start realizing that this is such an incredible product. Okay, at this point I'm rambling. Just take my word for it. Next, I've been really loving this lip balm from Ole Henriksen. It's new and it's the Pout Preserve Peptide lip treatment. By the way, I've already talked about a lot of these products in a first impressions video. It was a get ready with me and it was kind of like a nice little life update, a very chatty video. So I'll leave that on the screen if you want to see these in action for the first time. But what I really like about this is that A, it has peptides and so it's going to help kind of soften the signs of aging or at least prevent the signs of aging. I am getting vertical lip lines on my upper lip and so I'll take all the peptides I can get. And I also really enjoy the texture of this. What's interesting is so many people describe this to me as a thick lip balm and I totally disagree. To me, this is actually on the thinner side, maybe like medium weight texture, not thin, not thick, but it's very silky and buttery. So it has that slip. If you don't like a really like grippy, more occlusive lip balm or lip mask, you like something that's gonna be really lightweight, a lot more buttery, have more slip to it, then I think you'll really like this. But for those of you like me who do like a more thick, occlusive, long lasting, almost sticky lip balm, it's not too slippery. It's like somewhere in the middle, which I think is really nice for daytime. I wouldn't reach for this when my lips are super chapped or, you know, when I want something to last all night, but it's a great product to just throw in your bag. It also smells like dreamsicles, which is one of my favorite childhood treats in the summertime, which is really nice. And I'm using this instead of my Rode peptide lip treatment. I loved the Rode beauty lip balms. Unfortunately, all of them turned really grainy over time and I had to throw them all out, which is such a bummer because um, it was a beautiful product and I actually preferred the texture of that more. But this is beautiful, smells amazing, feels really soft and silky and buttery on the lips. And I love that it has peptides. Another product that has just knocked my socks off in a way I wasn't expecting is this new Givenchy Skin Caring concealer in the shade C240. You all know me, it's really, really, really difficult for me to find a concealer that checks all of my boxes. The only one that is perfect in my opinion is the Fit Glow Concealer and this is now officially a close second. Because of this, I've actually decluttered quite a few concealers from my collection now because I'm just not gonna reach for formulas that aren't as good. You know, when it comes to skincare and skin and base makeup, we wanna look our best. We're not gonna reach for products that don't make our 
skin look the best that it, that it can. And so between this and the Fit Glow Concealer, I am set. Here's what it looks like on the back of my hand. You can see it has cool undertones, a little bit of pink, but also a little bit of peach. And it is super, super thin and lightweight. I mean, it feels like nothing on the skin and it blends out in a second. And I'll show you two different application methods. One, using it as an under eye concealer and another, using it all over the face like foundation. And it's so great to use as more of a multifunctional product because it's so thin and lightweight and blendable. But I usually don't like those kinds of formulas because I find that then the coverage just fades away. But not with this, the coverage actually stays pretty beautifully medium, despite how thin and runny it is. And with most really thin runny textures, I find that they emphasize fine lines. They're so thin that they kind of just sink into the skin but not with this. This seems to blur the skin. It really brightens my under eyes without being like too bright. And it sets down to a beautiful natural finish, not matte, not dewy. It's just that perfect in the middle Goldilocks concealer. I can't get enough of it. The gloss I'm wearing today is just this AF94 Give em Lip High Shine Gloss in the clear shade do you see it? I got this on Walmart. If you don't know, AF94 is actually the more affordable version of Halsey's brand About Face, hence the AF. And I heard about this gloss from Julia Adams. I'm sure you all know her. She's pretty big on YouTube. And she said that this gloss really filled in vertical lip lines. And the second I hear that, I am like, purchase and she's spot on. This is an incredible gloss formula. It's totally fragrance free. It's just a few dollars at Walmart. It feels cushiony and balmy and beautiful. And it's somewhere in between lightweight and having slip in a thicker, more grippy gloss. It's just kind of in the middle. And so I think that a lot of people will really enjoy it. And I just love that it smooths over those vertical lip lines and it makes my lips appear more youthful in the same way that the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balm does, the Lawless Forget the Filler glosses. I'm really enjoying this gloss. This is a great alternative to Lawless because it basically has the same effect on the lips, but for a fraction of the price. Oh, and there is a little bit of a pinky color underneath. This is gonna be in my fails video. It's the new Merit Lip Gelee in Mapleton. It's a fail because it's a pH adjusting color, so you don't get this. This pinky purple shade you see here is what this leaves on your lips. So that was just a fail. I just wanted to mention that because it does look a little bit pinky today, but this is the gloss I'm wearing and the Merit one just leaves a little bit of like a pink stain. If I want some color, I have only been reaching for two lip products for the past few weeks. We've got the Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oils and the Nabla Beyond Jelly Lipsticks. I'm not gonna go into much detail about the Rare Beauty ones because I just did an extremely thorough review that I will leave linked on the screen above. They're not a lip oil. Everyone's been saying that. These are a kind of K-beauty inspired glossy jelly lip stain. And my favorites are the shades Affection, Delight, and Honesty. Affection is this absolutely incredible berry shade. I feel so confident in it. I feel like it just makes my eyes pop. It makes me feel really sophisticated and chic. And it allows me to do a bold lip in a way that is both comfortable and long lasting because these do leave a stain. So I know that if it fades, I'm not gonna be left with some wonky looking color. I just think that they really, really nailed that shade. My other favorite is Delight and I actually don't have it with me because it's in my purse. I've been wearing it so much. I would describe it as a rosewood and they do basically call it that. I think they say it's a rosy brown. It's like if you took a rose, a mauve and a brown and you put it all together, you get something that is both wearable and muted, but also kind of bold at the same time. It's a really beautiful color, absolutely love it. And then my other favorite I think is Honesty because it's just a really nice kind of middle of the road, medium pigment brown on me. It's not too orange brown. It's not too yellow brown. It's not too gray brown. It just seems to be a really nice neutral brown that looks good on everyone I've seen try it. So this one's great when I want a little bit more of a softer lip look. And the other four shades here are beautiful as well, but they're all so incredibly similar that I honestly have like a hard time differentiating between them. And I think that's why they haven't really logged in my brain as favorites yet because they all kind of look the same. Interestingly, I love that I can't smell any fragrance. The previous Rare Beauty lip products I've tried just smelled and tasted really soapy and I hated it, but these aren't like that. They do have a cooling sensation from menthol, but for some reason I can't smell any menthol. They don't seem to dry or irritate my lips. And I just think that despite the weird marketing issue where Rare Beauty was probably already creating this as a jelly stain and then wanted to hop on the bandwagon of, you know, really 
capitalizing off of the lip oil trend. Aside from that whole thing that I don't agree with, I really love this product. If I want a more traditional kind of lipstick, but I want the comfort of a bomb, I've been reaching for the Nabla Beyond Jelly Sheer Supple Lipstick. I don't know, it's a long name. The Nabla Lipsticks. I purchased five shades and you can check my YouTube shorts here where I applied all of them so you can see what they look like. But my favorite shade is Lutz, which is spelled L-U-Z. And I've realized that this is basically my lip color. It's like a very, very, very soft, muted, kind of beigey mauve. So when most people will reach for a nude lip that's a little bit more beige, I've realized that this is my perfect nude lip shade. It looks like I'm wearing almost nothing. I just look a lot more polished. And so many people have been asking me what I'm wearing when I've been wearing this in my recent videos. And when I apply it on bare lips, I realize that it is almost my exact lip color. So this is now my favorite nude lip. And the formula of these is to Divine. As a reference point, they're basically the Glossier Ultra Lips, which is awesome because I love the Glossier Ultra Lips. I just didn't like any of the colors that they launched. So I much, much prefer also the packaging and the colors of the Nabla Beyond Jelly Lipsticks. Also, these have a lovely coconut scent, and I do prefer lip products to have a little bit of a sweet scent. I don't like anything like floral or perfumey or anything like that, but I do like the coconut in here. I just like that these are a kind of stiffer lip balm lipstick formula that you really work into the lips to get that emollients. They're just so incredibly comfortable. They're not at all what the marketing implied they were. They looked like they'd be super glossy and have this like wet look shine and they don't have that at all. But I truly like this formula more than I probably would have if they actually looked like that. Interestingly, Nabla actually reached out because they wanted to repost my reel. But I personally believe that brands should have to provide a creator compensation for reposting their content that they worked really hard for. And I asked Nabla for like, at least just throw me a hundred bucks and you can repost it? They said no. And I said, okay, can you send me the rest of the lipsticks? And then they ghosted me. So it doesn't look like we'll be working together anytime soon, but I really like these. The last lip product I have today is one that I've only been testing for about 24 hours, but I wanted to include it because I do feel confident that I love it. It's very similar to the Rare Beauty lip oils. In fact, let me apply it now. This is the Kaja Jelly Charm Glazed Lip Stain and Blush with Keychain. I removed the keychain part because I don't want that, but this is Fig Soda, which is a rosy brown. And while I don't like the packaging because it's got this rubber bottom component with this like part for the keychain that I just would never use. I do enjoy the product. So it's like the Rare Beauty lip oils, a very thin jelly that's a little glossy and then it stains the lips. Unlike Rare Beauty, these do have a scent, a little bit of a fruity scent, which I enjoy, and it's not too artificial, and it's not too strong as well. And I'll just build it up so you can see two layers. These do layer beautifully. I was hoping for a little bit more brown. To me, it's just kind of a standard rose with maybe a little bit of berry, but I think it's a really beautiful color. These are a little bit less glossy than the Rare Beauty ones, but they feel very similarly, just kind of that like classic jelly stain kind of feeling. And then once the glossiness fades, you're left with a beautiful stain. And just like the Rare Beauty lip oils, I find that the stain on these is really even and beautiful. I just like to kind of pop on a lip balm so it doesn't fade throughout the day. And so far, very impressed. Just gonna add a little bit more of AF94. I have one blush this month I've been really liking, and it's the Jones Road The Best Blush in the shade Sandy, which is their kind of, their most like neutral or muted or desaturated color. First of all, I really enjoy that the packaging of this is teeny tiny. I really don't like products that are super bulky like my M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil Blush. I love the shit out of that product, but my God, it's hard to travel with. So I really like that they made this super thin and they made it nice and small. I haven't compared like price per ounce, and so I'm not sure what the value is, but I just really like the size of these. I also enjoy that this formula is sheer but buildable, and I do use quite fluffy brushes when I apply powder blush so that they always go on sheer anyways, but I just really like having the control over something that is buildable. This is a classic Kate shade. It's just that natural, goes with everything kind of shade, a little bit muted, a little skin-like, a little bit pinky. It reminds me most in my collection of the MAC Glow Play Blush in blush, please. Very, very similar appearance on the cheeks, but this is a powder. Back to eyeshadows, we have three shades from the new Phytosurgeons Celestial Ceremony collection. My favorite being
evening astral atmosphere. I just love this color. It is like a coppery pink with tons and tons of bright silver reflex. And what's great about the Phytosurgeon's formula is that it's like a very, very thin, stiff balm. And so you just work your finger into it and you can get really thin layers and you can just build and build and build and build those thin layers and you can build it up to really high impact color and shine. What I like about the Celestial Ceremony Collection over their other kind of capsule eyeshadow collections is that they included more glitter in these for a brighter shine and that's really what I gravitate towards. This is the only Phytosurgeon's eyeshadow I've ever truly loved. And then they had their Weathered Woods collection and all of that was very cool toned, very gray, um, very taupey, and I just don't really reach for those kinds of shades regularly. So I'm so glad they finally launched something like Astral Atmosphere. I do like Crystal Constellation as well. It's just a lot more cool toned than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be more of like a warm bronze and I was really excited. As you can see, Crystal Constellation is actually quite cool toned and taupey. And I'll show you a clip on the eyes as well. It's really a beautiful shade. It's just not what I was expecting, but I can totally see myself reaching for this when I do want more of a cool toned smoky eye that isn't too taupey or too purple. It's something that still has, I don't know, a little bit of like kind of a, a dirty bronze quality to it. And I do appreciate that. And Starlight Symphony is just a beautiful kind of crystalline champagne shade. Great as like a sparkly glitter topper, but also just beautiful on its own if you want to do something with more of a bold lip and you want like a brighter eye. More eyeshadows, yay! The Victoria Beckham Eyewear eyeshadow sticks have been really impressing me lately. They just have a gorgeous, gorgeous, creamy finish. And the pigment is so smooth and even in these. And you get so much time to work with them and blend before they set down. But then when they do their budge proof, these are my four favorite shades. I already decluttered Trench, Bottle Green, and Pecan. Trench was just like way too close to my skin color. It did nothing. And then Bottle Green and Pecan were beautiful colors, but I just found them to be really stiff formula wise. But Trench and then these four colors are super creamy, blendable, very soft. So the shade that I'm wearing today as an eyeshadow base is Macaroon and it's this beautiful kind of lilac pink, a gorgeous cool toned pink. I absolutely love it and I'm totally going to be wearing it all summer. And surprisingly, my other favorite shade is Sunflower, which is this bright warm yellow. Both of those are completely matte and I feel like it's really hard to make pastel matte shades without it looking patchy, but Victoria Beckham launched a really sophisticated formula. And then the other two shades I love are Caramel and Oyster. Oyster is really nice. It's not your classic silver. It's got a little bit of warmth in it. So in some lights, it looks more silver on me. And then in other lights, it almost blends into my skin tone because there is a little bit of warmth to it. It's very interesting. I really like this color. And then lastly, I have Caramel, which is kind of like a deeper chocolate with a lot of gold shimmer running throughout it so it looks like a bronze. It's a little bit deeper than I expected, but I'm not mad about it because I think it'll work on a wider range of skin tones. I love this one as a smoky eye. And again, they're just really beautiful, blendable, and they don't budge. The last two products are from Armani, which they had sent me in a PR package. I've fallen head over heels for their fluid sheer in shade number two, which is champagne. What I love about this is that it sets down and it has a pump, so it's more multifunctional. You can mix it into foundation, into body lotion. You could put it on the high points of your face as a highlighter. You could mix it in with primer. You know, you really could do so much with it because it is a liquid formula with a pump. And as a highlighter, it's just so reflective, but without having any visible glitter particles and it just sets down completely and it doesn't budge. I don't like highlighters that feel really tacky and balmy and sticky on the skin. I don't like when my hair sticks to my face. So I have to have a highlighter that's either a powder or a highlighter that sets. And this is perfect. I love it. I think this is tied for number one favorite highlighter along with Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And that says a lot. And then lastly, we have the Armani eye tints. These are so beautiful. These are what I wanted the Glossier sky washes to be. The sky washes were like hella patchy, but these are a beautiful sheer formula that has actually very smooth, even pigment. So great for beginners to use because, you know, it's not overly pigmented that if you're not great at blending, you then have a patchy looking eyeshadow. They're sheer, but they're smooth and even. And so you can build them up in layers and they look great. You get tons and tons of time to work with these and blend them before they set down. And they come in a bunch of different colors and finishes. My favorites being 20 and 22, which are matte, and then 44 and nine, which are shimmers. Those are all my favorite products of the past few weeks. Let me know if you've tried any of these. What are your thoughts? Stay tuned for Beauty Fails, which is coming next. And if you made it this far, thanks so much. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.